So in this short tutorial, we're going to download aggregate privacy preserved data about people's movement in the early months of the COVID-19 pandemic. Then we'll do some basic data cleaning before using a free online tool called RAW to quickly see how movement trends changed over time. Now to do this, we'll use a data set from Facebook's Data for Good program called Movement Range Maps. Now, if you haven't already watched the intro video to learn more about Facebook Data for Good, make sure you take a second to do that now. Now, this data set can help answer questions like, did population's movement patterns change as a result of lockdown orders? The lockdown orders followed, and by which parts of the population, for how long, and in what areas? Now, we've already seen this data being used in the real world. Following the first UK lockdown in March of 2020, the Welsh government's data science team was able to detect the drop in mobility in people in Wales in response to lockdown orders. And they did this using this movement range data set from Facebook's Data for Good program. Now these insights provided rapid feedback into how people were responding to these new stay at home policies. Make sure you check out the link in the description below to follow this case study more closely. So let's get started by visiting the Humanitarian Data Exchange, which is an online data portal of open data sets from a wide variety of organizations that anyone can use to address humanitarian or social impact challenges. Once you get to this website, find the organization page for Facebook. Click on that second one there, the movement range maps, and you'll find three different files. Download the first two. So once you've downloaded this file, take a look at it by opening it in Excel. To do that on a Windows computer, just right click on the file and click open with Excel. Keep in mind, there are millions and millions of rows here. So depending on what uh, spreadsheet software you're using, it may cut it off. In the case of Excel, it only shows about the first 1 million, but it's enough to take a quick look at the kind of content and variables of this data set. Specifically, take a look at the first one, which is a date stamp. This is basically a date beginning in March 1st of 2020, and this file runs all the way to the end of 2020. The second column is a country, uh, articulated by its three-digit code. If you're ever confused, you can just Google three-digit country codes. The next one I want to point you to is column D, Polygon ID. Now this data set is disaggregated at a sub-national level. So for every country, there are districts, or in the case of the US, counties, uh, data available. Uh, so that's where we're going to have the unique identifier, a unique code for every single sub-national area that exists in this data set. There are a couple other variables that are important. The one that I want to point your attention to the most is column G, all day ratio, single tile users. Now this is essentially the positive proportion of all Facebook users who have opted into sharing their location history through the app, who have stayed put within a single location during that time period compared to a baseline period of February before the pandemic was really kicking off. So this variable, all day ratio, single tile users, essentially tells you who's staying put within a specific tile. In this case, a, a ping tile is about 600 by 600 square meters. And with this variable, we can answer a really exciting question for this tutorial, which is how did the proportion of users staying put differ between people in New Zealand and people in the US state of Georgia? So let's get started to figure that out. And we just wanna extract data from New Zealand and also specifically from the US state of Georgia within the country of US. Now to do that, the first thing we're gonna to have to do is break up this large file, again, five million rows, into something smaller that we can actually open and work with in a spreadsheet tool like Excel. Now to do that, the best tool that I've found to do this easily works really well on Windows and it's called Text File Split. Now again, this is free software, it's really easy to use. And what we'll do is we'll pick just a couple of variables here. The first one is the file that we'd like to split. And in this case, it's the file that we just opened up in Excel um, uh, here in this file. The next thing we want to do is tell it what output folder. And you can do the same folder. In my case, I just added a new folder called split so I could find these split up files. You can leave the file name how it is, or you can change it to whatever you'd like. And then what you'll do is you'll change the number of max lines to the number of rows you'd like in each file. In my case, we're gonna break it down from right now, there's a few million rows to about 500,000 rows. Once you select that, click Perform Split. And just a matter of seconds, you will find that in your split folder, you will have the full data set split up into a different number of data sets. In my case, it's, it's about 12 different files. You can see it by split one, split two, split three, each one with 500,000 rows in it. So now we've made it more possible to condense this big file into a smaller one. 
So now that we've split this large file into different smaller, more accessible files, we're going to want to extract into a new spreadsheet just the data that we care about. In this case, the data for New Zealand and the data for the US state of Georgia. Now, this process, the best I could do is a little bit of trial and error. In the original data set, all the countries were listed in alphabetical order. So for New Zealand, after opening up a couple of data sets, uh, I discovered that ours was in the split file number seven. So that's where we can find New Zealand. Now for Georgia's data, it's a little bit trickier because the file includes uh, the country names, not the subnational state names. Instead, to find just the areas within Georgia, what we'll do is locate um, the USA section, which takes up a few files. In this case, it's split file number nine. And then what we're going to do is search by its unique code. This is column D. But in the United States, every single row for a specific county is articulated by what's called a FIPS code, which is just a standard that you can find online um, if you find a good Wikipedia article here of all the FIPS codes for every county in Georgia. So as you can see here, the codes range from number 13,000 all the way down to something like number 13,510. So what we're going to do is open our split nine file, where we know somewhere hidden in here are the FIPS codes for just the counties in Georgia. And then at the top row, we're gonna add a filter. So you just highlight the entire row by clicking on the one, click filter, and then in column D, we're gonna add basically a number filter. So if you go to the filter for column D, essentially we're going to click on number filters greater than or equal to 13,000. So all FIPS codes greater than 13,000. And then we're going to go to is less than or equal to 13,501. We click OK here. We're going to filter out now just those counties in the US that are in Georgia. And that's how we get our Georgia data. Now once we do this, we're going to want to copy and paste all of this data for Georgia into a new spreadsheet. And you're going to do the same thing for all the data from New Zealand. In the case of this tutorial, that was all in split file number 7. And that's what we have here in this new spreadsheet. I'm going to scroll through it. You can see all of our data from New Zealand. As I scroll down, we'll start seeing all the data from Georgia. So now that we have both of our data from Georgia and from New Zealand in the same data set, let's do some basic data cleaning and prep before we can visualize the change in stay put ratio for both of these two geographies over time. So here's our current data set. Now you can see one thing I've done is I've gone ahead and brought back in the original column headers from the original data set. Now what I want to do here is with, we don't need a level of granularity for every single day. So what we're going to do instead is just find the week and take an average of the stay put number for each week across these two geographies. So to do that, I'm going to start a new column here in column K, we'll call it week. And we'll use a simple Excel formula. This also works in other spreadsheet tools like Google Sheets. Type in equals week num and that'll give you the number of the week throughout the year that the date corresponds to. So here for the variable, we'll choose A2, which is the uh, March 1st, that's when this first data point is, and hit enter, and there you can see that March 1st, 2020 was on week 10 of that year. Now to extend this to all of the thousands of rows below, we'll just double click on the bottom right of that cell, and it extends the same formula all the way down. Now we now have a week number for every single one of these data points. And we're ready to go ahead and make a quick pivot table that helps us understand the average of the stay put for each week for each of these two geographies. Now to do that, we're gonna highlight the entire data set. For me, the quickest way to do that is to click on the top left like you just saw here. Click on insert at the top and then pivot table. Uh, you can go ahead and leave the settings in the default settings. They'll start in a new uh, sheet in the same Excel file. So here's the, the formula uh, setting, setting area for a pivot table. Essentially what I really want you to focus on is at the bottom right of the screen, where you basically assemble a new table from that original data set we were just looking at a second ago. Now in this new table, I'd like every row to be a different week number of the year. So I'm going to take week and I'm going to drag it down to rows. Now in our columns, I like each country, one country for Georgia and one country for New Zealand. So I'll just drag country to columns. Now for the values for each cell, I'd like it to be um, the all day ratio single tile users. So I'll just drag that down to values and you'll see it populate here in the pivot table. 
Now, one thing that's really important here is the value is currently set up as the sum. So that means for each week, we're adding up all the individual days for that week. And we don't want that. We like the average. So we click on the drop down next to values, click on value field settings, and just change that from a sum to an average. Now this gives us a weekly average of the stay put variable for all of 2020 for New Zealand and what's called the USA, but keep in mind we're only having within the USA, Georgia state and its counties. All right, just one or two more steps left here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna highlight the data for USA, for New Zealand and for the week numbers. And we're gonna get all of that data and we're gonna copy that into a new sheet. So here I've pasted the data from that pivot table into a new sheet and spreadsheet. And what I wanna do is just clean this up a little bit to make it easy to visualize in our online tool a bit later. The first one should be week number. I'll just do week num to keep it short. Now, the structure I'm looking for for this data set is actually to have um, each geography in the same column. In other words, we'll have a separate column that tells you what geography this is. Is it New Zealand or is it Georgia? And that gives us just one column that contains exclusively the state put variable for both geographies at once. Now stay with me, we'll do that real quick. So in this second column, this is what we want to be our state put variable. So we'll just call it stay put in one word. But right now, of course, it only has the New Zealand data. Um, what we're gonna do then is basically just copy, cut, and paste the US data to the bottom of that New Zealand data, just like this. Highlighting all of the US, or in this case, the Georgia data. I'm going to the bottom of the uh, second column, I'm just pasting all that data right there. Now to mark that this is for Georgia and not for New Zealand, in the third column, we'll call it geography and we'll call this Georgia. So now we'll go ahead and just extend that all the way to the bottom. We'll go to the top of this column, we'll rename it geography. And now the first set is about New Zealand's data. So we'll type in New Zealand, we'll copy that and we'll just extend it all the way to the bottom of the New Zealand data. Now the last thing we'll do is you'll see in the first column, we only have week, the first week numbers, we don't have the rest of them, uh, because we need to copy and paste all the week numbers one more time. In other words, the, number, the week number will repeat one for each geography. So there we have it. We have our data set that's pretty much ready to go and visualize. We have three columns. The first one is the week number. Again, it's repeated once for each geography. The second one is the stay put variable, the average for that week. And the third one is the geography. Now we're ready to visualize this. So there are many ways to visualize this data set now that we've cleaned it up so well. In fact, you could do a lot of this next step or all of it through Excel. But I wanted to take this chance to introduce you to one of my favorite online tools called Raw Graphs. You can check it out at rawgraphs.io. It's free to use and it's open source. And most of the processing happens in your own browser on your machine. So you can work with more sensitive data if you need to. Once you get to the website, click use it now and you get to a page where you can load up your data. And it's as easy as copy pasting the data that you had just created in the previous steps, our cleaned stay put variable for these two geographies. So I'm gonna highlight all of that, copy it over and paste it. Just give it a second, you'll see it loading, doing some analysis. At the bottom, you'll see that it successfully imported and parsed 88 rows. It's that easy to get the data loaded up. So now the question is, what chart would we like to build? And one of my favorite things to use when you're trying to figure out change over time is a line chart. And so we'll just go with a basic line chart at the bottom here and click on that. Now the third and one of the final steps here is just to let the software know which columns correspond to which parts of the line charts. You're basically building the chart now. So if you can imagine how we would like this to look, we'd like to see the change over time. And so we will use our x-axis as our week number. So the longer the week axis, the further down the x-axis you go. And then for the y-axis, we'd like that to be the value of the stay put variable. So what proportion of the user base was staying put during this time period? So we'll just drag stay put right over to the y-axis. And then finally, we might, we'd like to have multiple lines, two different lines, one for each geography. And that's why we did some cleaning earlier to have one variable name called geography for uh, New Zealand and for the state of Georgia. So I'm dragging over geography to lines. And just like that, within a second or two, you have a chart. We scroll on down and we can see immediately some really stark contrast between these two uh, geographies. 
in the early onset of the pandemic, you can see that nearly 50% of the population in this data set in New Zealand were adhering to stay, stay put orders or staying put, compared to in the US state of Georgia when it only peaked around the same time at about 25%. So there you have it, just like that, we got our data into uh, an online tool and we immediately were able to see some fascinating contrast into the extent to which pe people were staying put uh, in two different geographies. Let's say I'm ready to share this with someone to communicate this big difference in, in staying at home within these two geographies. Step five here is my favorite one, which lets you export the visual however you'd like. Uh, for those more advanced users, you can export it in vector format. If that doesn't sound familiar to you, no problem. Suggest you just change that to either PNG or JPEG. In this case, we'll click uh, PNG. We'll give it a title like Stay Put, and we'll click Download. And that'll give you a visual just like this one on my screen. Now let's take a step back and appreciate the huge transformation we've achieved here together. Just a few minutes ago, we were faced with a large, complex data set with millions of rows. It was hard to make sense of that data. But in a few steps, using readily available tools, we were able to transform this jargon of numbers into a chart that tells a clear story. No data scientists, no advanced research skills necessary. So there you have it. If you're looking for more tutorials like this, check out the playlist link in the video description below. There, you'll also find important resources, including links to the case study I mentioned earlier, as well as the methodology behind this Data for Good data set, where you can learn more about the privacy preservation steps that went into these insights. And before you go, please help us to improve these tutorials. Take the short survey that you see here on the screen to let us know your thoughts about this tutorial and how you might use these insights. Thanks for taking the time, thanks for your feedback, and we'll see you soon.